NBC. This is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Good evening. We begin again tonight in Yugoslavia, which the U.S. believes may be on the verge of coming apart at the seams. International concern now focuses on the federal army and what action it may take against the two Yugoslav republics which have declared their independence, Slovenia and Croatia. An enormous convoy, hundreds of tanks and thousands of soldiers, rolled out of the national capital Belgrade this morning, headed for the two republics. That led the German foreign minister to warn that the army is running amok. ABC's John Lawrence is in Slovenia. The long column of Yugoslav army troops is now reported to be camped in several positions north and west of Belgrade. The leading elements are said to have advanced about 90 miles from the national capital. It is not clear whether the army's final objective will be Slovenia, or if today's deployment was intended as a military show of strength to intimidate the Slovenians. Meanwhile, Slovenians wait. Their forces have established roadblocks and barricades throughout the territory, ready to fight a guerrilla war with hit-and-run tactics first developed in World War II against the Nazis. We will have to fight. Otherwise, I believe they will try to shoot us as rabbits. As rabbits? Yes. They do not have any moral framework. They are just invading. They are destroying everything. In the eastern Slovenian town of Ormoz today, six houses were destroyed in a battle between National Army troops and the local Slovenian militia. The heavy fighting that took place yesterday left several Yugoslav Army soldiers killed or wounded. The Yugoslav Army's high command appears to be acting on its own authority, outside any political control. One hardline general talked today of the need to use force to preserve Yugoslavia as a nation. Food supplies were delivered for the first time today to Yugoslav Army units isolated in Slovenia. There appears to be a big difference in morale between Slovenian troops who believe they are fighting for independence and national army soldiers in the field. Nobody wants to fight. Ask, every, everybody ask here. Nobody wants to fight. But Slovenian government leaders admit that their forces are not equipped well enough to hold off a concerted Yugoslav army advance for long. Their only hope, they say, is for diplomatic pressures from outside Yugoslavia. As the Slovenian president says, we see ourselves as David against the Goliath. John Lawrence, ABC News, Ljubljana. Well, with six republics, 24 ethnic groups, many have believed that an explosion of ethnic differences in Yugoslavia was inevitable. And speaking of outside pressure, the Secretary of State James Baker and his European counterparts have been holding urgent consultations about what pressure, if any, they could apply to stop the fighting. At the State Department tonight, ABC's Barry Dunsmore. Secretary Baker says Yugoslavia may be on the brink of a full-scale civil war. And both the U.S. and the European community think the Yugoslav army is mainly to blame for the continuing fighting. There are indications that the army uh, may be acting outside of political control. That is a very, very grave concern of ours. Less than two weeks ago, when Baker visited the Yugoslav capital, Belgrade, he stressed the importance of maintaining the unity of Yugoslavia. Baker's critics are now saying that this was taken by the Yugoslav army as a green light to crack down when Slovenia and Croatia tried to secede. Today, Baker categorically denied this. Uh, our first priority was to prevent violence if possible. Now I think it is to stop violence because violence has occurred and to get a process of peaceful dialogue started. Baker and the Dutch foreign minister, who is here representing the European community, threatened to cut off all U.S. and European aid and to impose an arms embargo. While U.S. assistance to Yugoslavia is minimal, European aid and trade is significant. But the question is, how much influence can outsiders really have on the bloody ethnic feuds in Yugoslavia which go back for centuries? The answer, say the analysts here, almost none. Barry Dunsmore, ABC News, the State Department.